Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and would you believe it, there's somehow a working N64 emulator for the Xbox One. This is somewhat of a moral grey area, because whilst emulators are not technically illegal, they can be used for illegal piracy. I don't think there's any other kind of piracy, but it's definitely illegal. Nevertheless, it exists, and it works, and we downloaded it, so we can show it to you and your lovely faces right here, right now, because... That's how we roll. So, to nip this right in the bud straight away, how well does it run? Well, on the whole, not very well at all. Occasionally, things seem to be okay for a bit, but then it's massively outweighed by all the massive, laggy choppiness and all this, and it's just, it's just horrible. Even cutscenes have mixed up timing, meaning the music cues and actions don't properly sync up, as you can see here. <laughs> If you're a fan of choppiness, however, then you can have your fill with this thing. We tried out a load of different games to gain a proper understanding of how more taxing games handle, and it's about what you'd expect. Donkey Kong 64 runs like a pig, Perfect Dark is a joke, but F-Zero X seems to run just about alright for the most part. But the biggest problem for many titles is not how badly they perform, but with the insanely ill-thought-out controls. Pressing B takes you back to the emulator's menu, but also inputs B in the game. If you want to press B without going back into the the menu, you have to press X. Worst of all though, the control stick is not analog. For some reason, it's just emulating button presses like on a keyboard. It, <laughs> that means only eight directions of movement and no control over how quickly you move. For any 3D platformer or first person shooter, this is all but a death sentence. Also, if you can believe it, when you first boot up a ROM, the controller doesn't actually work and you have to exit out and then go back in before you can even start playing. I've seen better emulation than this on a PSP and even a chuffing Raspberry Pi. And this machine has at least 10 times the power of those. The resolution has been nicely boosted, which is a nice addition, but it also stretches everything to widescreen, so it makes everything look kind of fugly. I was hoping that you could change some of this in the options, but this is what happened when I tried to enter said menu. Nice. But enough of my wittering for now, actions speak louder than words, so I'm going to shut up and just show you what I'm talking about.
Go! See what I mean? If you want to see loads more footage and other games running on this thing, then you can click that card up there or the link in the description and you'll find a great big long video that we did with loads of lovely footage. It's not lovely, but it is footage of this. Best of all, you get to see what can only be described as a perfect dark fever dream, so check it out. So to sum things up, this emulator is a bit of a novelty, but isn't really worth your time or money. Yes, that's right, this thing isn't free. It'll set you back a mighty $10 should you wish to download it. The UI is bad, various elements just outright don't work, the games generally aren't really very enjoyable to play, and the developer has the cheek to charge for this. This just in, Microsoft have pulled it from the Xbox One store, so you can't even download it anyway, so save yourself the trouble. We'd say stick to original hardware, or if you really, really want to play in 64 games on your Xbox One, then just pick up this. It's got a lot of the good ones anyway. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you poorly emulate that subscribe button and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>